What do you do if your operating system's too old? Or maybe it's glitching out? No! You just want to play some old game and browse the internet, but you don't even have the money for an SSD, let alone a Windows key. Maybe it's time to consider the possibilities of Linux. Welcome to the DIY channel. Well, welcome back to the DIY channel. I'm so stoked with how my recycled NES slash HP laptop turned out. Here's how I set up all the software. Linux Mint, I would highly recommend. The XFCE version is so lightweight, it will make the 17 year old laptop run like a dream. I googled my GPU and the compatibility. I had to use version 20. You're going to want to create a bootable USB from the ISO file. I use Rufus, it works great. It knows that we're missing files and automatically downloads them. And we can burn it as an ISO mode, so the computer will think that it's a CD. Yes, it will erase all the data on the USB, but we want it to do that, and we're away. Set our boot options. Boot order from USB. F10, save, exit. Start Linux Mint. Install Linux Mint. English, US keyboard. Let's skip the Wi Fi. You can do codecs. Plenty of hard drive room. Erase disk and install Linux Mint. If you wanted, you could install alongside your Windows to just try it out. Right changes to disk. Continue. We are in France. I love how Linux lets you set up your username and password while it's installing. So handy. Cool, and it's installing. Once it's finished, reboot and rip out your USB before it starts back up. Connect to the internet so that you can do all the updates. Linux is a lot easier than it used to be. No more do you have to go into terminal and type sudo apt get update. Now you just do everything from the welcome screen. We'll hit start and type update manager. Refresh and hit install updates. Confirm and you'll have to write in your password. This is a common theme in Linux, but that's what makes it so much more secure than Windows. And it runs so much better. Could you imagine running Windows 10 updates on a HDD on a 17 year old laptop with two gigs of RAM and even trying to open Task Manager? and still using less than half of the RAM it has. Heck, just making this video, my Windows 10 computer's using 9.6 gigabytes of RAM, and now with updates finished, we're only using 33% of our RAM. That's just 660 megabytes. Do you think Windows 10 could ever? Ah, uh, you wanna, no. The last thing we need to do is open up Driver Manager and set our graphics driver to our GPU. Yes, we actually have a graphics driver by NVIDIA. So we want to select that and apply changes. Now we're ready to reboot and set it up to look like whatever system we want. We could make it look like Windows 11, Mac OS, Windows 95. Just jump into GitHub and find the theme you like. You should end up with two zip folders, one for the theme and one for the icons. We just need to extract them into our home folder, into a hidden directory. To go to view, show hidden files, I have to make a new folder called themes, and we put a dot at the front to make it a hidden folder. Create a dot icons folder. I'll we'll just extract it here for now. Because they're named the same, you need to go in to find out which one's which. Dump it into themes. And this one we can extract to here. Replace all. Oh, yeah, it's going to merge it with that. Now we can dump that into icons. Let's go to appearance. Let's see if we can find XP now. Yeah, it worked. Windows XP Luna. Ha! Huh, perfect. And our icons, is that in there? Windows XP. Desktop settings. Folder. Pictures. There's our background. We'll right click the start and go to properties. Panel button icon. Here it is. So we want to go image files. Pictures. XP icon. Okay. Ha! Perfect. Okay, that's enough playing around. Let's open terminal. The best way to get stuff done. It's basically like command prompt or DOS, but don't worry if you mess up a command, it's not the end of the world. Just press up to bring back the command and add the missing parameter. I'm going to do a sudo apt search wine. This is going to bring up all the different versions of the wine app. 
which is a compatibility layer used to run Windows applications so that we can run old Windows games. Definitely the program I want, so I can go ahead and install that by doing the sudo apt install wine command. sudo just means super user, like administrator. Yes, continue, let that install. That's wine installed, now we can go to wine config, cfg, default settings, we'll set that to Windows XP. Apply, okay. Now we can try Half-Life. So there it is. So we need to install it through wine. So we'll use terminal. Let's go cd slash to get to the root. ls, you can see media. So we wanna go change directory, cd media, ls for list. So we've got our media home file. So cd die wine. Press tab to auto complete your commands. So ls, we've got half-life and our flash drive. So we wanna go to cd half-life. So if I just type capital H and press tab, cause that's the only option with an H, it will auto complete that command. And then enter ls for list we can see our setup.exe file that's to install so if you want to understand the linux directory hierarchy better pause now so to give you the quick version boom two plus two is four minus one that's three quick maths cd slash media slash diy slash half-life enter ls wine setup.exe and now we're installing a windows application in linux not every game's gonna work but a lot will you can go onto the wine website to check the compatibility or you can just risk it to get the biscuit holy sh it's actually working ah uh, but no full screen unlike my ati graphics card in my windows xp build Nvidia. the way it's meant to be played good one nvidia We've got sound. Et bienvenue à bord de cette rame automatique. Notre réseau de transport oh, est shit, exclusivement réservé au personnel du centre de recherche de Black Mesa. Good as. 2024. We got a Windows XP game running on a laptop that doesn't even support Windows XP. How good is that? Oh look, there's the G-man. Alright, let's speed run this crap. Six minute tram ride, way too long. Nah, just joking. It's better off to uh, take your time with these old games and find all the easter eggs. Okay. Do you care if I press the button on your... <laughs> yeah, trying to get him in trouble. He doesn't like it when I do that, eh? Oh no, quick, get the ladder. Oh yeah, just caught myself. He's got a head crab on his head. He's done for. If you've never played Half-Life, this is a must play game. It seriously changed the industry. And it's a lot of fun, even to this day. Done? Yeah, So boy. looks like we're good on PC games. Let's move on to emulation and see what consoles we can play. So maybe terminal's a little bit much for you. Just go to start and software manager. You've got a search bar up here. For emulation, I'm gonna use Retro Arch. Definitely go with the one with the best reviews and just hit install. This took about 20 minutes on this old computer, but I'm not too worried. It gave me plenty of time to make my own custom theme. So you can either launch it from here or there'll be a Retro Arch file in your games folder. First thing I'm going to do is just update it. Update core files, update assets, update controllers, don't care about cheats, update database, overlays, shaders. Cool. Now we can go to our core downloader. And these are all the different consoles and stuff that we can emulate. Arcade machines, MAME, Atari, all sorts of stuff. Commodore, even got some special Doom ones. DOS is handy. A lot of DOS games that this thing will be good to play on. But seeing as though my laptop's inside a NES, I want to play a NES game. So I'm going to look for Nintendo Famicom Quick NES. But you actually got to right click to go back. Back again. And now we want to load content. So if we go to our home folder, I've got a ROMs 
folder in here, NES. I've got the Super Mario Bros cartridge. So I've downloaded that ROM from the ROM archive, planetemu.net. And now we just go load archive. Mario, the original, is such a great game. I love it so much. There's so many secrets in this game and hidden gems. So here's a little super cut of some of the favorite secrets I've found. Skip ahead if you don't want spoilers. Run and jump up here. And the end brick, there's another mushroom. And if you've already got a power up, you get a free life. You might think you're gonna break the game if you go out of bounds. But no, they just reward you for that and you get to skip to a whole nother zone. Sometimes losing your power up can be a good thing. It allows you to get to places where you couldn't have got to before. Even if I messed it up this time and forgot that you need to uh, go underneath first to get all the coins, but you get the idea. This one is super tricky. Hit the wrong box and you can't get it. So you need to get up here and break them first. And this last brick is a magic beanstalk. And that turns one of the harder levels into one of the easiest levels. You're away. All the coins you need. And on top of that, another warp zone. So we're already heading for World 8 and we've barely started playing. But heck, I don't want to spoil the whole game for you. So let's move on to some different types of games. I'm not sure this is going to work, but we'll give it a go. You need to drag and drop the PlayStation 1 BIOS files into RetroArch's system folder. Follow this link to get there. I'll also put the links for the BIOSes in the description below. PlayStation 3 controller config. That's a good sign. So if your RetroArch is starting in windowed mode like this, you may want to put it into full screen mode. Seems that the games run better. Just go into settings and video and then set full screen mode to on. So we're going to want to download the core for the PlayStation 1. What have we got? PlayStation. Here we go. PSXX. Let's try that. Now we just need to load the core. And now we need to load the disk. Oh yeah, it's actually working! Heck yes! PS1 on a NES. PS1 games work like a charm. But hey, maybe you're not into such old games. You can also just install Steam. Oh, no, it's running better in full screen mode. Well, there you have it. A 17-year-old laptop it's with a supported right. OS that can still play all the games for 100% no money. Thanks for watching, y'all. Catch you on the next one. I hear the Xbox store's about to close. Sounds like the perfect time to get one.